The next is carbon tax, um, a global price on carbon. For me, this is the end game for central bank digital currency. Um, they have found a way to make carbon a commodity and give it a price. So I would expect that people would definitely question the science around climate, the, the climate crisis when it's given carbon a price that maybe it's a little bit more suspicious and you might want to take a look at that. Um, we are moving into a carbon credits system that can only be implemented through um, central bank digital currency and a digital ID. The digital ID will be rolled out within the next 12 months. 12 to 24 months will be the digital ID and the central bank digital currency. You have India who have the ADAR um, digital ID. They're rolling out, they're piloting their central bank digital currency now in December. China already have it. Over 50% of the countries around the world are um, looking at it, piloting it, piloting it. There is that overarching, beyond the, the social and the political um, fighting that's going on, there's an overarching financial reset that is the elephant in the room that nobody is actually talking about. That is going to be reset to social and carbon credits. Net zero is not about saving the planet. Net zero is about taking control of the food and the energy and finding a way to turn that into a currency. It will be done through carbon credits. Carbon credits is the new currency. It will be a combination of social and carbon credits. So are you saying that's going to be the only currency? There won't be any other currencies? This will just be like the social credit system in China, where there's a score and people have to try and maintain that score or things like that. Like, is that it? It's, there won't be anything else? Well, that's the suggestion. When you think that from their point of view, there is too many people on the planet and not enough um, resources for these people. Now, there is enough resources. There's, Saudi Arabia has enough oil for 500 years. There is enough food. There should not be any hunger in the world. There is enough food. It's politics that gets in the way of that. But if you're coming from a perspective that you think that there is not too many people and not enough um, energy resources, you either reduce the population or ration the energy resources. Or both. And what do you think they're choosing to do then? There is population decline, any demographic decline in the West. They're moving to ration the food and the energy. The fiat currency is based on absolutely nothing. It's, it's the faith of the people. And with inflation, that starts to lose faith in the currency. So they're scrambling to get in a new currency. The new currency will be a credits system because the credit system is based on what is tangible wealth, food and fuel. So they take control of that, turn it into a currency and issue it through central bank digital currency, which is programmable money. They have total control. It's individual monetary policy. They have complete control over every aspect of your life, where you go, what you eat, what you buy, what you do, everything. That's the capability of central bank digital currency. A lot of people that I have spoken to have pretty much said, well, if I have nothing to hide and this means that I have a guaranteed income, then okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. But the reality is what's going to happen if we don't do something about this? What, what is really going to be the situation? Well, you are at the mercy of the dictate of the government or the shadow government. There's no one that gr agrees with every single policy from government. So at some stage, you're going to disagree with something and you're going to be cut off. You're going to be sanctioned with the penalties. Um, and people need to realize that they're, they're not going to agree with everything. I can take absolutely any individual and explain to them why it's a terrible idea for them. If you're on universal basic income, and you like to drink wine and you buy two bottles of wine. They can decide, oh, that's not good for your health. So we're going to stop you from buying wine. They can stop you from buying any goods. They can stop you from saving. 
So if you want to save to buy a house to go on a holiday, they can issue you with negative interest rates on your saving. Um, it's, they have every capability to control every aspect of your life. And with increased computer power, they can tailor that to the individual. So there's nobody that's going to escape this level of control. If you have nothing to hide, that's fine. But do you want the government dictating every aspect of your life? And in terms of the technological capabilities, are, are we there yet? Like, is it actually feasible from a logistical point of view that they can do this? No, we're not there. We're not entirely there. No, they, these are concepts in people's heads that they inch towards all the time. So they never achieve 100%, but they're always moving a little bit towards it. But you have um, the concept of B multiplied by C multiplied by D, um, the Yuval Harari, um, where B is biological knowledge multiplied by computer um, power multiply by data, which is what they're working on now, they need the data, equals hackable humans. So if you combine then central bank digital currency with artificial intelligence, which is constantly increasing, when the more data it receives, the better it gets, they are building the prison. That's what the prison is. The prison is an artificial intelligence prison. Your phone right now is your prison warden. And they cannot happen without digital ID. Digital ID is the last gate that we can rebel at.